Hey, what's up you guys? It's Scott with Everyday Home Repairs. I want to show you what has been one of the most common failure points in a furnace or a full central air system at my house or my rental properties over the years. Now the difference between calling in a professional usually runs me about $200 to $250 start to finish to fix this problem. Instead, I bought the same component for $13 on Amazon. It took less than two days to get it and it fixed my problem. So you can save literally hundreds of dollars if you can fix the problem like this yourself. But let me walk you through the failure mode. So what happens is you're turning your AC on or your furnace and you're not getting any air flow through your vents. Then you go to your furnace or your AC, this happens both on heat and on air conditioning, and you hear a whining noise. What does that sound like? Let me show you. So I'm gonna turn on this unit and it's going to try to start to cool the living space. So you hear that buzzing noise. You usually can hear that buzzing noise through your air vents, whether it's on your second level, your basement, it's pretty loud. And it also will generate a lot of heat. So you do not want to leave your system in that state because it can cause further damage. But let me show you what's going on on the internals. So let me give you a lay of the land at what you're looking at here. On the bottom here are your evaporator coils. Now this will be actually the cooling part of the system. So if you do not have air conditioning, you just have a furnace, you will not have that portion. Then you actually have your furnace yourself where you'll see your burners and that's where you're creating all the heat. And then up top we have the air handler which also has the control board. Now do be careful, before you start reaching around in here, you wanna make sure you have the power off, so hit your circuit breaker so you fully neutralize the system. Also, there is a safety switch right here. When this switch is out, the unit should not receive power. And then when you put the door back on, that presses that switch in and then the unit gets power. Now, this does often need to be taped if you're doing some troubleshooting because you need to see the system going through the cycles to fully troubleshoot it. But our problem really lies in this blower motor. So this blower motor, one has mo a big motor on the other side, which is actually what's creating that whining sound when I turn it on, and then has this capacitor, which is called a run capacitor that's needed for the motor to correctly operate. This specific component here has been my most common fa failure on furnace or central air systems. It fails commonly outside at the condenser and compressor, but also this one can fail on your blower motor where you're not getting that airflow through your vents like we're getting, and then you hear that whining sound at your furnace or your central air system. Now, if you have the power off, you can use a screwdriver or a piece of wood and try to spin what's called the squirrel cage in there. Those are the blades for the blower motor. If that spins, freely and doesn't seem to have any restriction hopefully your motor is still good and then that leads us back again to this capacitor so let's remove that and then i'll show you how to test it to see if it's bad now removing the capacitor is very easy but you do need to be careful because the capacitor holds energy so you need to make sure it's discharged you can take a screwdriver or like this nut driver here and and connect across the two terminals to make sure it's fully discharged then because I'm a little restricted on space, I'm just using the bit for the nut driver to loosen up the top mounting screw, where you just unscrew that, and then I can take the mounting strap off. Then you can get the size of your capacitor there. You can see five microfarad at 370 volts. So we have our old unit here, and then a new unit, which is the same five microfarad at 370 volts. Now you could also replace a five microfarad at 440 volts, if that's the only one you can get, and it will work fine. Now I'll set, now I'll set the multimeter over to the capacitance mode, and then I'll measure our suspected failed capacitor, expecting to get five microfarads. So we're only getting 3.6. So this unit hasn't completely failed, but it's outside the tolerance band, which is plus or minus 5%, which is 
or I've seen it as bad as plus or minus 10%. So that one is expected, not a complete failure, but it's definitely outside of the range. So now let's test our new unit, expecting again five microfarads. And we're getting it within a tenth, which would be within plus or minus 2%, so well within the tolerance band. So now all we're gonna do is install this new capacitor. And then at the end, I'll tell you, sometimes it can be hard to get, especially in a timely manner. So we'll go over some options that you have for getting these so you can get your furnace or air conditioner back up and running. But first let's install this and see if it fixes our problem. Now this part is up to you and it's at your own risk, but you can go ahead and depress the switch to bypass the safety. So now the unit is acting like it has its cover on. And now we can flip the unit on, turning power onto the unit. AC is going to try to kick on and that blower fan is going to try to start. So that fixed our problem. What I can say is if that doesn't fix your problem, the blower is on rails here. So you can usually remove your control board fairly easily. This unit isn't great with having quick disconnects, but most units do have quick disconnects. You can remove that blower unit itself and then take off the motor. And usually you can get a replacement motor pretty quickly as well to swap that out. I've done that with other units it's much more expensive, obviously, for the motor, but it will save you a ton on labor. Usually, if the motor is having issues, your scroll cage will be tough to spin. It will not spin freely. You literally might be able to move it, I'd hope, but it's not going to spin freely. So that would indicate if your capacitor, a new capacitor doesn't work, that your motor could be the issue. So now this unit is back in business. $13 is all it cost me to get this up and running. Now, where can you get these capacitors if you are short on time? I tried to get this capacitor the same day, but I'm in a little bit smaller town, so there wasn't really any shops that had them readily available. I did find them online at Granger, so depending on where you live, you might be able to get one from a Granger supply. I also found some at Ace Hardware, but again, it was only at specific Ace Hardwares that were about a two hour drive away from me. But if you live in a large city, there's a good possibility you'll be able to find them. All you have to search for is five microfarad, 370 volt, or remember in this instance of 440 volt, a higher voltage rating would work. You can't go lower. So if you have a 440 volt, you can't use a 370, but you can go higher. And then last ditch effort is possibly just go to those professionals in your area. Call around, see if you can pay 2x or 3x the part cost to get that part from a professional in your area. They usually carry these capacitors on their truck because it's such a common problem. Now I tried that and I didn't have great luck. They actually would sell me one, but they wanted to charge me a $125 charge for me to drive to the van and get it plus $80 for the capacitor, which was ridiculous. So I just ordered on Amazon. I got it in less than two days uh, because it is a pretty common part. And you'll look down in the description, you'll see the link to the actual one that I used. Now let me know if you have any questions. You guys could have a little different issue for sure. The capacitor might not be such an easy swap for you and a fix like it was here, but let me know what you're facing and I'll try to help out the best I can. And before you take off, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. We have multiple videos coming out per week to help you with repairs and improvements around the house. And I'll catch you on the next one. Take care.